All right, welcome to Vector Operations. Vectors, you remember, have two things. It has magnitude and direction, vectors. So we have a problem here, and I want to show you how to set something like this up. So let's say we had a soccer field. Okay, so we'll draw our picture of a soccer field. And let's actually pick a different color so we can actually see this soccer field. There we go. So this is our soccer field. And inside this field, people are playing. And so let's label the people as we see fit. So we got Emily passes a ball six meters directly across the field to Kara. So you could imagine Emily being here. There we go. So this will be Emily. And she passes a ball across the field to Kara. So we'll label Kara here. Here's Kara. And then she kicks the ball downfield to Louisa. And when you draw this, I mean, this isn't really drawn in perspective to the field, but it isn't too bad as far as uh, perspective to the people on the field. So this will be Louisa L. And it wants to, so we got a, let's label. So this is six meters. This is 14.5 meters. And the question wants to know is what is the ball's total displacement, which remember, displacement's a vector, as it travels between Emily and Louisa. So this, this ball trip is going to be this red line right here. Okay, so this is going to be the vector. Remember, arrowheads indicate the direction that the ball is actually traveled as far as its displacement. Because you remember what displacement is. It's where it started and where it stopped. Okay, even though it went along the blue path and the green path. What is the ball's displacement at this point and this point? Well, that's this is nothing more than a uh, Pythagorean theorem problem at this point. I mean, we could just, if I just draw a different triangle over here, um, we could draw it sort of like this. In fact, that's about the sloppiest triangle ever. Uh, something like that, where this is 6 and this is 14.5, and we want to know how far that is. Well, if we call this little a and this little b, we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 6 squared plus 14 and a half squared equals c squared. And I'll be right back with that answer. Okay, so this side on the right becomes 246.25. And then you square root both sides. And so the square root of that is about 15.7. 15.7, and that's rounded. And that would be meters. So this is 15.7 meters right there. That's that's the magnitude of the displacement. Now let's try to get the direction. Well, this is where I am going to overlay like a compass on here. So check this out. All right, now let's say we had a compass here and we labeled this um, north, south, west, and east like on a map, okay? northeast, south, and west. I want to find this angle right here. I have to find that yellow angle right here. So how how big of an angle is that? Well, I need trig to do that. And there's lots of ways to do it. And I'm just going to use the tangent because I, I can pick this side and this side to do that. That would be opposite and adjacent. So if I said the tangent of an angle, which we can call this angle theta, that's usually how it is, angle theta, would equal opposite over adjacent, which in this case is 14 and a half over 6. Um, we would do second tangent 14.5 divided by 6 equals, and you would get about a 67.7 degree angle. So angle theta is about 67.7 degrees right here. Okay, this is 67.7 um, degrees. Uh, 
Uh, let's see here. All right, so our answer, if this was our answer blank, our answer would be 15.7 meters at an angle of 67.7 degrees. And by the way, I typed in 14.6 when I did that, so it's like 67.5 it should be, but we're just going to go with this. And the compass direction would be north of east. This angle is opening up. It's opening up north of east. You see that? This is this is this angle here starts east and opens up. So it's 67.7 north of east. That, my friends, is a vector. That's what a vector looks like. Okay, great little problem. Might want to go back and check that out again, but I have another. So let's crank it out real fast. Um, a little bit of vocabulary on this. This is a plane fly. It says, after flying at an altitude of nine miles, an airplane starts to descend when its ground distance from the landing field is 175 miles. What is the angle of depression from this por uh, for this portion of the flight? So we'll have the ground be red here. So here's the ground. And we'll have our airplane up here. Okay, and it says after flying at an altitude of nine miles. Okay, now you got to know what that is. That's that's this distance here. This altitude is nine miles. It says that it starts its descent when the landing field. Okay, here's the landing field here is 175 miles away. Think about that. Think about it. 175 miles away. So this distance, this distance from here to here is 175 miles 175 miles and the reason for that is you want your descent to be very gradual you don't want to you know flip grandma upside down when this plane comes in for a landing at a 60 degree angle right you so this angle is going to be very very small now what throws people off is this this thing right here angle of depression what does that mean well let me show you here is, if I make this parallel to the ground, this is the path of the plane, okay? Assuming it's level. When it starts its descent, it comes in something like that. The angle of depression is this angle right here. Oops. It's this angle right here. It's the angle from the horizontal down. So it's kind of like aiming out level, and then it, angle of depression is how far down it goes. This is called the angle of depression. Okay, that's the angle of depression. Um, it wants to know what is that angle of depression. So we want to just find the angle here. Uh, we know that this angle is the same as this angle so there's lots of ways to do that um, you could come over here and make a rectangle out of this and call this nine miles in fact that's what most people do and they you know since this is kind of a rectangle now you could call this green line 175 miles but we need to find this angle so let's say we used these two things we would be using the opposite side from this angle we'll call that angle theta again Greek letter theta, the opposite side and the adjacent side, so it would be tangent. So we would say tangent of the angle of depression equals 9 over 175. Okay, opposite over adjacent. And so that would be, let's see here, second tangent, 9 divided by 175 equals and it would be a very small angle of 2.94 degrees. So we'll call that 2.9 degrees. Like I said, that makes total sense if you think about it, because you want that angle to be almost unnoticeable. Okay, very small. All right, you guys have a good one. That does uh, some good examples of word problems with vectors. See ya.